I'm Dr. Kimberly Matthews and this is Ruth, my nurse, and today we're going to be talking about LEAP procedures and some of the questions that patients have concerning LEAP procedures. Well, what is a LEAP and how do we go about doing the procedure and why do we even do them? Why do we do them? That's a good question. So a LEAP procedure is um, basically a, a procedure that you would have after um, say you have an abnormal pap smear and then we do another procedure called a colposcopy and then depending on the results of the colposcopy um, you may need to have a leap procedure. Um, it's basically a procedure to remove some of the abnormal cells of the cervix um, to get a, a bigger portion of the abnormal cells of the cervix to remove. So it's going to depend on how abnormal your colposcopy results are as to whether you need a leap and that's something that your provider will talk with you about at that time. Um, Basically, the way the procedure is done, is it can either be done in the office, um, at our south office um, in Leewood, we can do the procedure there, or we can do it in the OR. And um, if you do it in the office, we basically numb the area around the cervix up, and then we take, it's basically like a warm, um, cautery loop and remove some of those abnormal cells. In the operating room, some patients that are really nervous for their colposcopy or feel like they just don't tolerate exams very well, which is very normal, and if that's you, that's fine. We can do it in the operating room as well, and that way you can actually be um, sedated or put to sleep, and then we can do the procedure that way. Yeah. And um, should I be on my cycle or should I not be on my cycle when I'm my period when we want to do this procedure? Well, basically we don't want them on their cycle yeah. because the, it, again, it obscures the field and it's hard for you to see the, right. the actual abnormalities on the cervix. Yeah, it's definitely better to not be on your on your period just because we do kind of do a colposcopy at first. We want to take a look at the cervix and so if there's a lot of blood there then we may not be able to see the area of abnormalities yeah. that we want and to And I remove. know I ask a lot of questions sometimes or patients ask questions about is it going to really hurt and I tell them to go ahead and take like four Advil before they come in like a half an hour before their procedure just so that sometimes they cramp a little bit um, but we do numb the cervix with the leap so right. most people do not feel anything and they think you know it's over with and no short time in a short right. period it's usually time. you're right it usually it seems like it, again it's kind of like a pass where you work yourself up for it it's usually not as bad as it seems right. at the end but the leap machine does make a pretty loud noise so when we do it in the office you're usually really good about right. kind of turning the machine on because I think if anything what we get is people hear that noise and that yeah. kind of alarms them and they can kind of jump yeah. so yeah. um yeah it's holding still is the big thing is the biggest <laughs> key. yeah exactly and um uh, so after the procedure, can I go back to work, or do we, you know, is that something typically I can do? Or? Yeah, um, if you do the procedure in the office, you could go back to work. Um, you may want to take some time off, you know, that afternoon off. Um, it kind of depends on how you do with the procedure. I would say for the majority of women, um, you could go back to work that day if you wanted to, as long as your bleeding wasn't too heavy and you weren't having too much cramping. Um, if you did elect to do your procedure in the OR, then you probably would need to take that day off just because you're going to have more of an anesthetic effect and right. so you're, you may have some nausea and mm -hmm. some sedation. So if you did in the OR, I'd say at least you'd want to take a day off. Yeah. And we typically need to see the patient a couple weeks after the procedure so that mm -hmm. you can check the cervix and make sure it's healing okay and they're not right. having any complications. What type of complications um, are possible, even though they're rare? Yeah. What kinds of complications are? The most common thing we would see is bleeding. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're saturating through a pad or having heavy bleeding like a period, that would be something that you would want to let us know. And with a leap, it may be right away, but it's also common um, to have that bleeding seven to ten days afterwards. As we do the leap, you your cervix kind of forms a little scab over the area where we take off, and so sometimes you can even have some delayed bleeding. So if you have any heavy bleeding, we want to know about that. Um, you, It's also possible to have infection, and so that's very rare, but if you had a kind of an abnormal smelly discharge or fever, that would be something we'd want to know. Yeah. Um, but those are probably the most common mm -hmm complications that yeah. we see from leaps, and then, although uh, yeah, rare, like right. you say. One of the other questions that get asked is, um, what, when will the results be back in, basically? And yeah. usually we see them to come back in about a week to a week or so, mm -hmm. So, um, and then we call them as soon as we get those results and let them right. know, and before they even, you know, have to come back in for their follow-up, basically. They usually do, yeah. yeah. And then it's also important, we usually tell them that you're going to still need follow-up pap smears even though we're removing those abnormal cells. It's still really important that you continue to have your um, follow-up pap smears 
for quite a while after the leap, and we'll give you all the information, you know, as to when you need to come back for your first one, but we'll still be following you really closely after your yes. leap procedure. And are we, am, are we more prone to miscarriages or preterm labor after we've had some cervical cells removed mm -hmm. from our cervix? Yeah, that's a good question. A lot of um, the procedures that we're doing are on younger women that are still in their childbearing um, years, and so we get a lot of that um, as a question. And we really are selective in who we do a, um, a leap procedure on. Um, if you just have minor abnormalities of the cervix, we may just choose to follow you with pap smears or pap smears and colposcopies. And again, that's something you're going to discuss with your um, practitioner. But there, there are some studies out there that do show having a leap procedure may slightly increase your risk for a couple of things. One may be scarring of the cervix, so it may actually be more difficult for your cervix to dilate at the time of labor. Um, and usually we can, as your cervix starts to dilate, that usually isn't as much of a problem. Um, another off the problem could be preterm labor or something that we call cervical incompetence, and that's where your cervix actually dilates a little bit too easily or your cervix is shortened and opens up too easily. And those can be complications. They are rare. It's not a majority of the women that have those complications after leap procedures. Definitely most women that have a leap procedure go on to have a very, very normal pregnancy. So if you do need a leap procedure and you still want to have children, please don't feel that you shouldn't have the procedure. If your practitioner is recommending it, it's probably for a good reason. Um, we also would check your cervical length. Um, some practitioners will monitor your cervical length if you've had a leap procedure during your pregnancy to try to um, see if we can um, ca catch that type of scenario before it happens. So those things can happen. They're very rare. Um, and if you know, definitely feel free to talk with your provider about that in more detail if you're worried about that. And one last question is, when when is a good time to start having intercourse again? Because that's a big question that a lot of people want to know. <laughs> of want to know and don't want to ask. Yeah. Um, I usually tell patients we want to see you back in two weeks to make sure your cervix is healing well. And between the time we do the leap until we see you back, it's probably better to refrain from intercourse. Um, once we see you back at your post-op um, two-week visit, then we can let you know if we feel comfortable with you having intercourse again. But until that time, probably better to refrain just because you can have some bleeding and other issues.